Happy Friday, everybody. Today we are looking at 50 foot microtrains boxcars. To be 100% honest with you, this is really more of a oh, PSA because I've been noticing kind of a trend on eBay lately and to anybody who's been in the game for a while in N scale, they will tell you that this is kind of the bread and butter of of mid tier good runnability uh, box cars, and most layouts have quite a few of any of these. And what I have been seeing on eBay in the last few months is prices move up, and that is is just part of the world right now but microtrains just because of the name can kind of bring a premium on a lot of things and while cars with opening doors you know um and this one has like a functioning flashing light and whatnot on it they can pull a premium you know you're looking at 25 to 35 dollars depending on uh you know if the car's been weathered or, or whatnot and In certain circumstances, they can be definitely worth that kind of money. The The high 30s could be a little tough for me, but with a proper weathering job and, you know, whatever there, it could possibly, you know, pull that kind of money. But what I've been seeing is people selling this right here disguised as something like this. And... So I, I kind of want to go over some of the details on how to spot actual microtrains cars because it can be kind of important and uh, I, I don't want anybody to get ripped off. So let me let me go through some of the things that I find and maybe that will help you to make good buying decisions. So the first video that I ever made for uh, or that I can remember making anyway was how to put microtrains couplers on uh, roundhouse rolling stock. And that's what we have right here. And if you put these side by side, you know, short of the, you know, the opening and closing doors, they are relatively similar in looks and quality. And unless you're really up close, it is difficult to see the difference between this and this. And that was kind of the premise of my thirst our first video but even then the price difference on on these two things was drastically different and people are trying to sell these as this and you just can't do that and one of the easiest giveaways um to tell in a picture is if they show the under underside of the uh the piece of rolling stock this is what a roundhouse piece of rolling stock looks like it's got a pot metal undercarriage and all microtrains pieces of rolling stock that I own have something that looks similar to this. And this isn't always a dead giveaway, but I wish I could get my phone to focus a little bit better. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in there. I almost got it. You, if you can almost tell... Right there in the center, it says micro trains. And all of my uh, micro trains pieces of rolling stock have an area in very small, small lettering that actually have the micro trains uh, insignia on it. The reason why I say this isn't always the case and they don't just all look like this is because there is Concord pieces of equipment or pieces of rolling stock, which this is an excellent piece of rolling stock that look very similar, but they got Concor on the bottom of it. So if you're looking at buying a piece of rolling stock right now, especially on eBay, it would probably be worth asking the seller to show you the underside or to just verify that it was in a microtrains box because I have been seeing a lot of listings with what I know are red caboose pieces of rolling stock with microtrains wheel sets under it. Now, not a bad thing by any means, 
but not worth $20. This is a $5 to $8 car, honestly, with $5 worth of, you know, wheels underneath it. So you're looking at like a 13 to high-end $15 right now. These pull anywhere from 20 to 35 like I said. So with PSA aside, why why are these these good cars? Well, at one point they were substantially more affordable than they are now, but you can buy them in runner packs and you can find them as part of lots and you can get them at that $20 range. And in the $20 range, they they do they run great. You can get them in lots of different varieties. So depending on your needs cuz sometimes you're looking uh, for rolling stock for specific needs they they a lot of times you can come with medium shank uh, and, and this is a medium shank truck set or a short shank truck set like is on this this Montana rail link one and it just gives you a little bit more coupler uh, hanging out there and that can be important sometimes you have some finicky rolling stock and having a couple different varieties of these to use as buffer cars can can really be beneficial to any layout. They they also look really nice. So if we go ahead and zoom in on these cars, one moment, comparatively, especially to the uh, the roundhouse rolling stock, if you get up close and personal, these have much finer detail and the bolt work, especially on this door on this NS, is is immaculate. Um, when I when I got this, it's kind of part of a lot. I was super excited with how nice this this car actually looks. The printing is is very nice. The color is correct to my eye. I really like that oxide color. It comes off nicely. I wish more of my BNSF um, cars were this color because I think it's closer to what I see around here. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, it runs flawlessly. This was something that I think was a custom job that I ended up with. And it has been a mainstay on my layout for a long time. This acts as an excellent buffer car. It has a little extra weight because there's a battery and whatnot in it to run the, the flashing light back here. The opening doors make for a nice little compartment that uh, easily hides the switch but makes it simple to actuate. I don't know if you can quite see that down there to adjust my light and again as always please excuse my dust yeah there it is back in there anyway this car is absolutely used all the time so it is very dusty um, and again like if you look at the door the the opening doors is a huge huge plus that's worth a little bit of money right there this I Fortunately got much cheaper than $30. This was like $20 at the time, but this is what I would consider a Without body mounted couplers anywhere from 25 to $30 with with a functioning, you know Blinking light back there and honestly it doesn't need body mount couplers. It does run flawlessly without it and the Southern Pacific was something that I picked up as part of a lot this would be what I would consider a $30 car. I have said in the past, and I will maintain that, that I am not good at weathering. So anything that would come pre-weathered is worth a little extra to me. And I think this is one of those that definitely has a nice weathering job on it. Whether it came factory, I think this is probably a custom job. But the opening doors on this are a really nice touch. The, uh, the interior, if you can see it in there, has wood paneling and whatnot. So that's, you know, added money right there. All of these have that undercarriage detail that we talked about. And, yeah, this is just a super nice car. So this would be what I would consider a $30 piece of rolling stock if I was to buy it. Yeah, it would be a better deal uh, with body mount couplers and whatnot. But it does run flawlessly. And this has the short shank. I actually prefer running short shank on most of mine. I like my box cars to be nice and close together. So, um, anyway, these are an excellent deal. If you come across micro trains, everybody knows they're awesome. 
by all means, pick some up for your layout. You're not going to be upset that you did, but just make sure, especially on eBay right now, that you get what you're paying for. So um, just thought I'd put that little PSA out there. It's been kind of a bit of a con I've been seeing lately. So thanks, everybody, for stopping by. If you like what I do, please check out my Patreon. I would really appreciate it. And uh, I will see you this Sunday for my Jeevo review. It is going to be a long one, so buckle in. we got a lot to go over. So I'll see you then. Bye now.